When it comes to seed starting space, I'm a little bit limited. And that mostly is because my cat enjoys eating anything that is plant-like that's not, he's not cut off from. And you combine that with the fact that just in general, the house doesn't need to be filled with seedlings. Today's video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for how to start seeds in a smaller space. Number one, let's just get it out of the way. And that is going vertical. So there's many different ways to do this. My old school it's probably as old as me plants light tray thing that has a dish on the bottom this is probably my least favorite option but it definitely works it has three tiers which obviously is nicer ones that I've seen that I actually like a little bit more are either the plastic or the metal shelving units where you can just put it all the way to the roof obviously be kind to yourself if you can't breach or you have any disability don't put it at the roof anything that goes vertical and you can get things relatively close if you go this route you need to keep in mind that if you can't remove the shelf easily you will be restricted to the height between those shelves. The other thing you need to keep in mind is if you start the whole rack in seeds, you're going to need double, if not triple or quadruple the space because you're gonna have to bump them up, particularly if you start them right now. That leads me to my next tip and trick. Don't start things until the absolute last possible moment. Shockingly enough, other than planning things out appropriately, starting your seeds later in the season, it has relatively zero effect on when your harvest will happen. Now this is within reason. A, I would say three to four weeks, anything started within three to four weeks is all going to end up harvested and flowering and doing its thing in and around the same time. And that solely comes down to growing degree units and how plants kind of process natural light versus different heating conditions, et cetera, and so forth. So everything tends to level out. To put it into perspective, I can start tomatoes now and I can start tomatoes two months from now. And then I can grab little baby tomato seedlings at the greenhouse in June. And shockingly enough, they all kind of end up coming to light in and around the same time. So when you feel like you're behind, you're probably not. And all you need to do is to watch this video right here where I talk about ways to lazy slash speed up gardening or seed starting and you'll be just fine trust me you can you can really put things off like i'm talking march put off end of march april put off type thing yeah that's right and this is going to save you space because putting things outdoors and throwing a blanket over them is much easier than having to buy a bunch of shelving and a bunch of lighting. Okay, next one is harnessing the power of light. So I did a video on mirrors and in that video, I discussed how white paint, mylar, mirrors, anything reflective that reflects light actually allows you to get away with obviously more efficient lighting, but also less lighting when necessary. So if you can get a grow tent, that is obviously helpful. If you can line the back of your grow or the top of each shelf, whatever the case is, with some sort of reflective whatever, that's the reason why this room is white. It, it looks yellow on the camera, but it's definitely white. Everything in this room is white and there's a reason for it. It's a plant room. It need, I want the light to reflect. If you can find a way to try to get the light moving around more, you can save a substantial amount of space by lessening the number of lights or the amount of equipment and stands you need to be able to put lights up. Because I think that they probably take the most amount of room ballast wise. Now they're obviously LED ones which are sleeker and slimmer and they don't take up as much but they're brighter and if they don't have a dimmer on it which is my next tip if you have an LED without a dimmer you need to be you basically scrap the idea of vertical because it'll burn your your plants because you have to have so much distance between the LED light and the top of the plant canopy so you have to constantly be adjusting it all you need to do to gauge this is start with what you have and then as plants begin to grow if you notice there is turning either direction or things are looking long and floppy, that is when you pivot. The other indicator is if the plant comes out, the cotyledons come out, 
if the cotyledons are sticking up in the air upwards and they're not completely flat, there's another indicator that the light, there's not enough light or the light's not close enough. So if they're showing signs of leaning, legginess or cotyledons sticking straight up, step one, I want you to actually move it closer to the actual plant itself. So bring the light down or put in more reflective material. Usually 24 to 48, it happens pretty darn quickly. If you're not noticing a change, in the phototropism of the plant, then you can pit it and potentially add more light. So just troubleshoot it a little bit. They give you lots of warning signs. It's no big rush when things start going down the toilet in regards to where the plant decides to go. It is called phototropism. You have time to pit it, but just start with the basics and then build up from there. Next tip is the watering. So. Bottom watering, tray watering is probably the most popular method for actually watering your seedlings. However, you can actually just mist the seedlings to begin with, and that is a better way to get things moving, particularly if you wanna reduce dampening off and actual fungal growth. Now, if you go the misting method, the benefit to this is you don't need as many trays with water, and therefore you can save some space. Now, if you don't wanna go that route, the next option to save space with less trays and money is to actually use a wicking mat. Now you need like a specific setup for that. Um, and by specific, I solely mean it just has to be a little bit of a dish a Rubbermaid would do. Literally like, and I'm talking like a big shelf type Rubbermaid. Check out my video on wicking mats if that's something that you're interested in. That's definitely another space saver com obviously compared to outside container type situation. So give that a shot when it comes to watering, but try the misting first. I think you'd be really impressed with that. Next one is air movement. Yes, plants do enjoy fans. It toughens them up, makes it easier to harden them off, you name it. But fans take up space, a decent amount of space. What you wanna do is you wanna get a fan that actually moves, kind of the old school ones that your parents had before AC really was a thing and everyone was rich and could afford it. You wanna get a fan that moves and you obviously want it to move from one side of your seed stirring setup to the other side of the seed stirring setup. And furthermore, all you need to do with said fan, instead of having a fan on every single level, is just move this fan every single day down a, a unit and that will give you a very similar, if not identical scenario to if you were just to leave the fan on the plant. Now this is even more important and actually even better than what people do normally because typically we just put the fan on, we set it and we're, we forget it. When we look at mother nature, and when we're starting seeds, we can mimic what mother nature does. She does one thing very specific, and that is very rarely is she blowing at night. She's not in, she's not that kind of a lady. So what you wanna do is actually limit how much air movement you end up with. And a great way to do that is to just move the actual physical fan and or put your fan on a timer. Heavily recommended. Plants do not need to be exposed to that level of stress continually. If you want a pretty chilled out way to understand what seed seeds can be started later in the season, you can actually check out my December or my January seed starting video as well as any seed starting videos coming up. Reason being is because in these videos, I do often talk about seeds that can be started in January, but also can be postponed till later. And that'll give you a good idea as to which seeds you can start in smaller setups. The other tip trick I have for you is actually to head over to the Gardening in Canada Facebook page. You do not need to be Canadian to be in there. A lot of people have a ton of very cool ideas for small spaces. You are not alone. There's a lot of people out there with small spaces and you can actually pull from their ideas to help build your own space. And there are some pretty ingenious stuff. Th things I can never figure out. The geek crew is always smarter than I am. That's just a fact. So go check that out. I will put the link for that down below. If I forget, tell me. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.